Understanding is the way, not following. Indeed, understanding is the way to transcendence, a way to transformation, but never following can be the way. Understanding leads you to the beyond, beyond the mind and imitation. Understanding leads you to the beyond, beyond the mind and imitation. Why following keeps you within the domain of the mind, duality and conflict. Therefore, never follow. Instead, understand the Master and you will attain to transcendence. A Taoist Master, Chong Su, always watched monkeys. He was deeply interested in them because they are the forefathers of man. And a monkey is hidden in each one of you as well. This whole world is nothing but a monkey mountain. All around are monkeys. What is the characteristic of a monkey? What is the deepest character in the monkey? It is copying. Gurdjieff used to say that you cannot become a man unless you stop being a monkey. Because we always like to copy this and that and the others. Never try to be original. Certainly he was right. Someone asked him, What is the deepest characteristic of a monkey? His reply was copying and imitation. Monkey is a perfect imitator. What have you been doing your whole life? Have you been a man or a monkey? You imitate, you just look around and you follow. Following you become false. You see somebody walking in a particular way. You try to walk that way. Somebody is wearing a particular style of clothes. You would like to have that outfit. Somebody has got a car, you would like to have that model of the car, and so on and so forth. Everything that you do, indeed, is just imagination. You never look at what your needs are. And if you do look at your needs, life can become a blissful existence because needs are not much. Imitation will lead you on a path which reaches nowhere in the end. Remember this always. Imitation will lead you on a path which reaches nowhere in the end. Needs are not much. Needs are always few. If you look to your needs, you can be satisfied in this very moment. If you look at your desires, you will never be fulfilled. Contentment is easy because what is needed? Few are the needs. But if you imitate, then millions of unnecessary needs crowd all around. And there is no end to them because there are millions of people and you would like to imitate each one of them. You like somebody's clothes, next person's shoes, third person something else and so on and so forth. Because there are millions of people and you would like to imitate every one of them for something or the other. It becomes impossible. You start living everybody's life and then you forget that you were here to do your own things. Instead, you have become an imitator, a monkey. You are here to fulfill your own destiny 
and that destiny is individual. It is nobody else. This existence has given you birth to fulfill a particular destiny which cannot be fulfilled by anyone else. No Buddha, no Jesus can do it for you. Only you can do, you can fulfill your destiny that is given to you. But you are imitating. That is why Hindus say that unless you stop imitation, you will be thrown again and again into existence and this is the theory of rebirth. This is the theory of remaining in the cycle of birth and rebirth. And then the birth is cause of sadness, death is cause of sadness and life will remain a cause of sadness. You will be thrown in again and again unless you fulfill your destiny and your innerness flowers, you will have to come back. But you are following the priest and consider him that he will lead you to heaven. No, no following can lead you anywhere. Lead you that you are monkeying, you are imitating. You are following someone and you will continue to remain in this cycle of birth and death. You will be thrown in again and again unless you fulfill your destiny and your innerness flowers. You will have to come back. How can you flower if you imitate? You see a musician and you want to be a musician. You see an actor and you want to be an actor. You see a doctor and you want to be a doctor. You see a chef cooking something, you want to be a chef, not discovering what you want to be, what you are, what your potentials are. You want to be everything except yourself. And you remember I told you, be yourself and that is the way to transformation. And that is all that you can be and nothing else. Nothing else is possible and nothing else and nobody else is like you. Nobody can become your ideal. Neither Buddha, nor Jesus, nor Lao Tse, nor Chong Su can become your ideal. Never make anyone your ideal. Understand Buddhas, understand Jesus, understand Lao Tse, understand Chong Su, and follow your own way. Nothing else is possible and nobody else is like you. So nobody can become your ideal. Love a Buddha, Buddha is beautiful but never imitate. Else you will miss. Jesus is wonderful but he is needed no more. Existence is fulfilled that destiny. That work is complete. He has come to a flowering. That is why, whenever a person has flowered, he never comes back. But Christians continue to be fooled that Jesus is coming back and they are waiting for Jesus. Nobody else is fooled so much as Christians that Jesus is coming back. Love Jesus, but there is no need to be an imitator, otherwise you will end up unfulfilled in misery and anguish. You cannot really follow anyone. You can take hints, but then you have to be very alert. Hints should not become blind imitations. Follow the hints and do your own things. If you see a Buddha, try to understand how he has flowered and then use this as a hint. This is the way to take hints, to take notes from the men of substance. If you see a Buddha, try to understand how he has flowered and then use this as a hint. What are the methods? What has he been doing? Try to understand this. 
let that understanding be absorbed in the very core of your being. By and by you will start feeling your path. It will never be like Buddha's and it can never be. Certainly it will be absolutely different, but absorbing Buddha will help you. Absorbing the Master will help you. You will have to grow in your own way, but absorbing him will make you more and more understanding, will develop the, the trends of understanding. This is the difference between an authentic disciple and the follower who is false. This is the difference between a master who wants authentic disciples, not the followers, never follow anyone, including me. A disciple is something completely different from a follower and I would like to tell you to be a disciple, not the followers. The word disciple comes from discipline. What is discipline? Discipline is learning. The root word of discipline comes from learning. It is nothing to do with self-control, no. This is what you, has been infused into you. A disciple is one who is ready to learn. A disciple is one who is ready to absorb. A disciple is one who is open and receptive. A disciple is one who is ready to become a womb. Because you remember in the womb a new growth takes place. He is not antagonistic and he is not fighting and arguing. But followers go on arguing go on fighting. He is trying to understand. And when you try to understand, the head stops functioning. Because head can do only two things. It can either fight or it can fall. It knows no other way. It can either be a blind follower or a blind enemy. But it can never be a disciple. A disciple is totally different because he is not head-oriented, instead he is heart-oriented. He loves the master, he absorbs him and then goes on his own way. It is very indirect and very delicate. It is never direct. You cannot just look at the master and do whatsoever he is doing. Then you will become a follower. When I was a small, I like other people around. When I see the master doing things, we used to start following. Then my grandmother cautioned me, do not be a fool to follow. Instead, try to understand why does this master, why does he do this particular thing this way. And once you know that, you will not be following you. Instead, you will have your own way. You cannot just look at the master and do whatsoever he is doing, she told me. Then you will become a follower and you will remain stupid throughout the life. You cannot learn the words and start repeating them. Then you will become a follower then the effort has been in the head and head is the problem. Whenever you are not fighting and not in search of somebody to imitate, your consciousness falls from head to heart. Whenever you are not fighting and not in search of somebody to imitate, your consciousness falls from head to heart. Then you are open and then you are simply in love. That is what is meant by Shraddha. Shraddha is a beautiful word. It cannot be completely translated into trust. It is trust plus much more. It comes from heart. When heart is open, there is tremendous love. There is love plus awakening plus trust is Shraddha. Love plus awakening plus trust is Shraddha. 
It is neither belief nor disbelief. Neither think, trust or faith to be belief. It is not. It is love. It is opening. It is trust. It is understanding. Both belief and disbelief are in the head. Trust is from the heart. Awakening is from the heart. Love is from the heart. When trust, love grows, trust comes. When trust comes, understanding comes. With understanding, awakening comes. And then it becomes Shraddha. It has nothing to do with belief or disbelief. Believing or not believing is not concerned at all. You simply love. You see a rose flower, do you believe in it or do you disbelieve in it? You do not do any such thing. You simply look at it because the rose flower is existent. It captivates you. Nobody is following the flower. Nobody is against it. The sun rises in the morning. What do you do? Do you believe? Are you a believer or disbeliever? Or do you follow the path of the sun the whole day? Because you are a follower. Either way you will go mad. You simply enjoy. You absorb the morning sun. You absorb the freshness of it the youngness of it, the newness of it. With sun, everything is becoming alive. You become the sun. In your presence, everything begins to take a new life. You enjoy the very life and become more and more alive through it. Be a sun. The moment it rises, the flowers begin to blossom, the birds begin to chirp, a new life surges through the entire existence. A master is the rising sun that has risen. The inner light is incandescent. In that everything begins to take its own shape. When sun rises, no bird is following, no flower is following. Instead they are absorbing the very youngness, the very freshness, the very beauty, the very newness of the sun and they start opening up into myriad forms. The birds begin to express their own joy in their own way, absorbing the sun the youngness and the freshness of the sun. The flowers absorb it and begins to open the petals of it. If you ever see a flower blossoming in a slow motion, in a three-dimensional, you will be amazed the way the flower absorbs the energy of the sun and its petal begin to dance, begin to dance and then da that dance of the petals of the flower is called the opening of the flower. So too, when the, you absorb the light, the inner petals, the petals of your inner lotus begin to dance. The petals of your inner lotus begins to dance and then lotus comes to a full bloom. You enjoy the very life and become more and more alive through it. You look at a rose and something of the rose reaches to your heart. You look at the lotus blossoming, something reaches to your heart. Outside the rose is flowering inside the heart something begins to flower you reach a master a buddha or a jesus or a chongsu or a laosi 
what do you do? Do exactly as you would do with the rose or with sunrise. What do you do when you see a flower blossom, when a bird is chirping or the sun is rising? A Buddha or Jesus or Lao Tse or Chong Su is a sun that is now rising to its full glory. There is no need to follow, absolutely no need to follow. Just absorb the energy as it manifests in myriad ways. Jesus' last word to his disciples were, Eat me, let me be your drink and your food, let me flow into your bloods, let me flow into your blood through your beings, absorb me. Are you understanding the words of Jesus? To be a Christian means understand the words of Jesus. To be a Buddhist means to understand the words of Buddha, not being a Buddhist. Jesus' last words to his disciples were, Eat me, let me be your drink and your food. Let me through your blood and through your veins absorb me. When he says eat me, that means absorb me, digest me, understand me. Do not follow outwardly, instead understand me, digest me. And then you will have your own light. A real man never gives you rules, never gives you any commandments. Instead, he gives you the eyes. He never shows you the path. Never says that this is the path, follow it or follow me. Instead, he simply gives you the light and says, now take the light and go into the darkness. He simply says and simply gives you the light and says, now take the light with you and go into the dark. This light will show you path. This light will show you your path that is typically yours. Discover your own path. A false master always gives you a map. This is the map he says, but do not go astray. Follow this map. He never gives you the light. He never gives you awakening. If you have the light, then there is no need of the map. Map is needed when there is no light. You are stumbling in dark, holding your maps. If you have the light, then there is no need of the map. You will find your path. And everybody's path is going to be different and unique because each one of you is different and unique. Let this understanding go deep into your heart. There are no two persons similar. There cannot be. Existence is not repetitive. Existence is not yet exhausted. Existence goes on flowering in new uniqueness every day, every moment. Everyone is extraordinary. There is no need to prove it to anyone. You are extraordinary in your own way. If you want to prove, you will become a monkey, not a man. Stop copying, stop monkeying. It is easy to copy, but it is very difficult to understand. Yet understanding is the way of transformation. That is why one copies, because it is easy. Just a rule has to be followed. You need not have any understanding about it. Clear-cut rule is given and you follow it. People are interested in clear-cut rules. People are interested in clear-cut rules so that they can follow. They are saying we are not going to grow. We are not going to become mature ourselves. You simply give us a clear-cut rule what is to eat, what not to eat, 
when to get up early in the morning and when to go to the bed. Just give us a clear-cut rule so that we can follow. We want to become a monkey, not a man. A man will never ask for clear-cut rules. He will ask for understanding. Give me that knowing which everything becomes known and understood. Knowing which a deep understanding dawns so he can find his own way. So he can move in the wide world. He need not have a map with him. No need of any compass. Just your inner light is enough. And you will find your path. There is beauty because there is freedom. When there is no freedom, there is no beauty. Bondage, slavery is the ugliest thing in the world. These are the outcome of following because there is no light within. Let there be light. Absorb the light of a Buddha. Absorb the light of the Master that he is and you will discover your own path. Indeed, you will discover your own path.